All right. Uh, when, when we're not busy prepping for class and grading stuff and, and that sort of thing, me and Professor Nora do what everyone our age does. That is, we sit around and we talk about the good old days and how things are so much different now than they were in the good old days and all that and how you, quote, kids learning to program today, all right, uh, have it lucky, you know, all the great tools that you have and, and so on. <laughs> I thought that was a, I thought that was a little creature running around. I was like, yeah, I was like, uh, yeah. No, that would be my kids playing with my bag again. <laughs> now, I thought you were going to say you should just sit around and drink beer. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I was going to say nap. <laughs> 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 to, to answer those questions, used to, but not much anymore, and nearly every day between classes. <laughs> now, I'll, I'll let you sort out which, which answer <laughs> is, is the answer to each of the questions, all right? <laughs> all right. Uh, so, one of the things, though, that we talk about, much like the old codgers that we are, is do some of the modern software tools spoil programmers? All right? And there's a good article, and I'll, I'll, I'll just pop it on for a second before we start talking about this. And to show you how popular this article is, if you do a Google search for You type in Visual Studio Makes. What's on the top of the list? Makes you stupid. <laughs> All right. And this is an article we found. I don't know. It was written a while ago. Actually, it was written a long time ago. See, another sign of us old folks. I was going to say this was written a couple years back. It was written in 2005. All right. So yeah, a couple years back. And. Before you think, oh, this is just one of those tech people that hate Bill Gates and is bashing on Microsoft and all that. No. All right. This is posted on Microsoft's MSDN blog. All right. And this fellow gave this speech to the New York City .NET users group. I'll, uh, I'll try to remember to post a link. If I don't, just Google does Visual, Visual Studio makes you and fill in the blank. All right, what's the point of this? The point of this is the one thing that I've stressed <coughs> throughout this course, the one thing that I've mentioned throughout this course, and I, I want to stress it and I want to keep coming back to it, is Visual Studio is a tool. It's a tool to help you do something. And there's a really neat, quick things that you can do with Visual Studio, and you can use the tools in Visual Studio to, to really do some great things with relatively little amounts of code. Think of insert, update, delete, queries, any of them that you've done so far that you've seen in class. There's not necessarily a lot of programming code there. And that might make you happy, all right? You don't have to write code, it does a lot for you. But as anyone has ever sent someone to the store, to get something from them knows. When someone else does something for you, you might not always be happy with the results. You know? What's the old saying? If you want a job done right, do it yourself. All right? So while we want to use Visual Studio as a tool, we also want to know how to do it ourselves. And we want to really understand the code and, and do it. Then we can make proper choices of, I will let Visual Studio do this. I will code this myself. All right. If you don't know how to do it yourself, then you're at the mercy of the way Visual Studio and the .NET framework chooses to do things, which might be good in a lot of situations, and it might not be so good in other situations. So today, we're going to start looking at what if I wanted to write some of this code myself and not use, for example, 
uh, a grid view or a details view to do my updating? What if I wanted to write my own form that inserted or updated or whatever? All right, that's what we're going to start with uh, uh, today. Now, before we get into that, we're going to sort of have a side trip. That's, that's, that's closely related to this, uh, the whole DIY, do-it-yourself. And that is error catching and processing. If we're doing this, this code ourselves, we better learn how to capture errors very well. Um, we've nudged in that direction when we've done things like on the item updated event or the item deleted event where we put some code in to handle the exception. But that's not really error processing. That's sort of hooking on to Visual Studio or, or, or the .NET Frameworks uh, error processing. What we want to do is we want to write our own code to catch the errors and to do something with them, as opposed to just sort of hooking on to the ASP.NET scheme. And that comes back to, and a couple of students mentioned it when we were talking about this, the try-catch block. Alright, now, the try-catch block is where you can try a group of statements and you can that catch, that is, look for specific errors. Alright, and then process those errors um, in turn. What kind of code should you put try catches around. What kind of code should you put try catches around? Anything you might think might have an error. Anything you might think might throw an error or throw an exception. What are some examples of things that you're... Click event. Click event? Uh, text box event. Data entry into text boxes. Okay. Um, People are coming up with some good suggestions. Let me try to say, yeah, go ahead. Maybe a link to something in case something happens. Okay. If the page is down on your linking to another site, maybe. That won't really throw an exception, I don't, I don't believe. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure. That I don't think, I think that's out of our control, uh, a broken link. Um, but some of the other things people said, I think, are, are moving in the right direction. People said things like operations on a text box, operations on a click event, and so on. Let me summarize some of these for you. And some of these, we can sort of mitigate the possibility um, by doing validation. For example, if we were to ever to do a division, divide this by that, all right, and we got the values from the text box, one of the possible things we could do is divide by zero. All right? That's going to cause an error. All right? Because they can't divide by zero. The other thing is we could have a, an error if someone enters in uh, non-numeric non data in there. Now, to be sure, we can put validation in. Remember, we have any number of strategies for uh, addressing problems. All right? We can put validation. Or, or let's back up. We can first of all design our forms so that you can't get an error. All right. For example, some of you for the tuition calculation, you put the number of credit hours in a drop down. You know, one through twenty four or whatever. Well, you're not going to get invalid data that way. You've you've removed that possibility. All right. So that's one thing that could be done. All right. Another thing you could do is you could put validation. So you can design the form, you can put validation uh, code in there that you let them sort of go wrong, but then you catch them before any real damage is done. All right, so you can prohibit the error from happening, you can catch it before any damage is done, or you can be there with the broom and dustpan to clean things up if, uh, if there is a problem. So, I'm not saying what I'm going to talk about today replaces validation or proper form design. This is just another tool, and I'm going to start out going over try catches with mathematical operations because those are the easiest to mess up because I can control those. All right. So what I'm going to do 
is we're going to make some errors in math and we're going to write try catches to catch them. All right. Now, the other kind of big case, and probably most relevant to this uh, class, where we can run into these problems is with database operations. All right, because database operations are inherently unpredictable. All right. For one thing, certain conditions are simply out of our hands. If the database server is down, it doesn't matter how good of a programmer you are, you're not going to be able to anticipate or code to, to, to keep that from happening or anything like that. The best you can do for that sort of error is be there to, to clean up the mess and, and report the error in a, in a way that is user friendly and maybe create a log file of the errors that happen so a system administrator can view it or, or whatever. All right. So just the nature of database operations is such that, yeah, there are naturals for this because we can't prohibit some errors from happening. We just have to be there to handle them gracefully. But again, it's probably easier for me to demonstrate this with mathematical operations. So I'll go and do that first and then we'll move on to some database operations. Uh, and as we do that, we will write an insert of our own as opposed to writing uh, an insert based on a, a details view. All right, that, that's what we're going to come around to uh, by the end of class. So let's play with some uh, math. And let's make some exceptions. Errors are, are, are termed exceptions. I think exceptions are more inclusive error or inclusive term than error because exception simply uh, uh, refers to unusual circumstances that you want to handle. You don't necessarily, it doesn't necessarily relate to an error, it's any sort of unusual circumstances that you want to handle. So let's go in and I've posted to Angel the example we're going to do today. And let's open that and let's add some math to it. <coughs> so I'm going to open up the example I have. And I'm going to create a new page in here called Exception Practice. All right. And let's go on and let's add a text box, or add, add actually a couple of text boxes, just so we can do some mathematical operations that... Um, can go wrong. And again, simply for purpose of demonstration, I'm not going to do any validation here. This isn't to suggest that you don't need to do validation anymore. This is just a, a good, quick and dirty way that I can have control over the errors that I get. So I'll go in here, I'll add a couple text boxes. button on here and then oops, put a label for the answer and I'm going to code it simply to say Label one dot text equals text box 
s1.txt divided by text box 2.txt. We should be aware of at least two things that could go wrong with this. All right. The two things that could go wrong with this are number one, if we try to divide by zero. So if text box two has a zero in it, um, it's going to give me an error. The other thing is that we could have non-alphanumeric things. Yes. I was going to say, don't you need to convert that to a? No, I'm living on the edge. I deliberately am not converting because my whole purpose here is to demonstrate errors. So yeah. Converting that would be a good practice, but I, I deliberately don't want to. Uh, I guess we, you know, we could at some point, but I'm, I'm keeping it simple. So let's run this. If we behave ourselves, everything works fine. All right, so if I go and run this and put in and put in 10 divided by 2, or 2, I get the right answer. 100 divided by 2, I get the right answer. So, this code works, but it's not, it is very fragile. For example, if I type in some garbage divided by two, boom, it blows up. And, again, remember, you have two choices in the matter. You can handle it, or the framework can handle it. I have not written any code to handle this error yet. So, therefore, the framework is handling it. And because I'm in debug mode, it's nice enough to stop and show me exactly what line of code caused the error, and to tell me what kind of error it is. And in this case, it might be a little hard to read, but this says invalid cast exception. And that relates exactly to what you were saying, is it can't convert the data. All right. So, let's go and continue this. And that's what the user would see. All right. Well, we know we don't want to, ha we don't want to have these ugly errors. We want to handle these errors ourselves. Let's see what happens if we divide by zero. We get the word infinity. And I'll be darned, it does not seem to throw an exception anymore. Boy, I, I can't tell you how annoyed I am by that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where it got infinity from. I've never seen it Yeah, I... I, I not every every term I do this and I forget that it did it that way and and it 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 gives me that. Let's conversion to integer sort of throw it. Yeah, it, it, it would not throw an exception there either. Let's try this. Let's try dividing a very big number by a very small number. <laughs> wow, pretty smart. All right. I'm trying to get a second kind of air. Let's see. About zero divided by zero. Uh, give me the same thing. Say infinity. Oh, or not a number. <laughs> Interesting. But it did not throw an exception. Did and you try negatives? Yeah, negatives will work. on the one exception until uh, uh, I, can, I can see 
uh, exactly what um, another exception could be. Hmm. I know what I can do. I don't know. Do I want to do that? No, I don't want to do that. All right. Let's let's talk about this, and we'll see we'll see how it goes. We might have to use our imagination and pretend. All right. Now we can ramp this in a try catch block, and the way it works is like this. All right. Oops. I put a try, and the statements that I want to try. I can put here. I know where we're, we'll, we'll see this. We'll see this. We'll see, well, we might see different exceptions when we go to database uh, uh, operations. Actually, I'm not even sure that. <clears throat> At any rate, I put the statements that I am suspicious about in a try. All right? So any statement that I think has a possibility of giving me grief, I'll put in a try. So this will be any database operation, by the way, because any database operation has a potential to cause me grief because it could, the database could have crashed and I, ca I can't access it. So I'll put any code that I'm trying to uh, execute that I think could go wrong in here. I then have a catch. And that catch, the way it's written now, it will catch any error. All right? will catch any error and allow me to process the error. So if I say catch ex as exception, that's catching any exception that occurs. So I can go in and say um, Label one text exception has occurred. Okay, and if I run this, I'm going to do one more test on the zero. Yeah, still infinity. I get my code that says exception has occurred. Why? What's different between now and before? I've written code to handle it. So ASP.NET Framework says, hey, he has that one. I'm going to let it go. I'm not going to process it. So remember, either you or the framework is going to handle the exception. Now, the code that I've written is going to handle every exception the same. OK? So. Um, It doesn't matter what exception gets thrown, it's going to handle it the same. All right? Let me just for laughs, I know, I'll throw another exception in. I'm going to create an object, or actually I'm not going to create an object. I'm going to dim.
never had much this much trouble trying to create an error in my life. <laughs> Usually they all happen pretty naturally. Okay. Yay, I can create my error. Here's what I did real quick. I created a, a data source object. Then I destroyed that data source object. And now I'm trying to access one of the properties of the data source object. Well, that data source object isn't in existence anymore, so it will give me an error. Okay? So now I have two errors that could get generated. Let's look at them. I'm going to remove this code. All right? The first error, this line's going to generate. And it's going to be an error that every object-oriented programmer has seen from time to time. That is a null reference exception. All right. What is that telling me? That's telling me that this object doesn't exist. So therefore, I can't do anything with this query string. It doesn't exist because I created it and destroyed it. So now, at this line, it doesn't exist. So, a null reference uh, exception is what the error said. And if we look at this and continue. Null reference exception. I'm going to write that on the board so I remember it. Now, let's go in and let's comment this out temporarily. I'm going to go and comment it out and put in some garbage in the division. So I'll divide that by this. I get an invalid cast ex exception. So now my code is returning two different errors, depending on whether I've commented that one line out or not. All right? In fact, let's be clever about this, and let's rearrange these. Let's put the division before the connection string problem. So if I run this, oops. If I run this and I put garbage in the text box, I get my invalid cast exception. If I run this and I put good numbers in there, valid numbers, I put valid numbers in there. Then I get my null reference exception. So, good. We can control which of the two errors that we're throwing. Now, let's go back and put the try catch in. If I'm catching an exception, it's going to catch any exception, all right, regardless of the type. Therefore, my code to process this cannot be very specific. Because if I'm only catching an exception, I don't know which exception I got. So, in other words, let's go and let's put in label 1. I can put a message, there is an exception. 